Okay, thanks, Joe. Okay, good morning. Uh, my name is Dr. Jerry Green. I am the organizer of this uh, news conference, and um, I am uh, with uh, Association for Access to Healthcare Services. Uh, I'm sorry there are not uh, more politicians or doctors or our opponents here. We invited a lot of people, as you can see from our, our media advisory. Um, a lot of them, uh, some of them uh, declined to comment or attend, uh, some of them uh, did not reply. Uh, as you can see from the list, we in invited a, a large range of people from all parties, including uh, the Premier, the Minister of Health, uh, people from the College of Physicians and Surgeons of Ontario, um, uh, Canadian Medical Association, and uh, others. Uh, I think a lot of them are hoping that you will not cover this issue. And I think some of them are hoping and praying that you will not cover this, this issue because I think some of them, they're, they're religious people. They're very religious people and they're just praying that, that we do not get coverage. It, it's, a, it's a controversial issue that we are talking about. Um, and uh, I, I, I think, unfortunately, a, a lot of people are staying away from the from the controversy because as a politician uh, it can be dangerous uh, to uh, to be associated with uh, either side because no matter what side you side with uh, you will have other people uh, angry with you so this issue is uh, really as the title says ensuring that people have access to uh, a family doctor nearby this is a statement that Dalton McGinty made uh, at the uh, uh, at the uh, an annual general meeting of the Ontario Liberal Party several weeks ago, that everyone should family should have a, a doctor nearby. And uh, the our opponents are many. Uh, our opponents uh, are the CMA, the OMA, uh, the College of Physicians and Surgeons of Ontario, the Royal College. Um, even the SPCA, I think, is against us because <laughs> I think they're uh, they're uh, they're claiming we're 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 being abusive in in our in our comments um, that we're uh, abusing uh, some of the uh, the watchdogs. Uh, the CPSO is supposed to be a watchdog, and uh, some people remove that word "watch" from watchdog and just call the college a dog. I should tell you a, a bit about my own uh, my own story. Uh, my own uh, my own story is that I I graduated from the University of Toronto Medical School in 1971, um, and I got into I, I'm not an international medical doctor, which this conference is a lot about. I I, I am born and raised here in Toronto. Uh, I got into a controversy with the college over uh, alternative medicine. The college removed my license for for prescribing vitamins and herbs instead of drugs and surgery. I got together with my MPP at the time, Monty Quinter, and we passed a bill that prevents the college from going after doctors for uh, solely on the basis of, of practicing alternative medicine. Uh, the college reinstated me several years ago. Uh, they gave me what's called an educational license, uh, which means that I, I'm able to practice as a physician, as a resident in a teaching hospital. Unfortunately, it's almost impossible for me to find a residency uh, be, because uh, of the overcrowding of the system. And so I'm in a similar position to the international medical doctors here in Ontario in that I cannot find a residency. So our mission uh, as international medical doctors and re-entry physicians, I, I am what's called a re-entry physician. I'm part of the Ontario Ministry of Health re Phys Physician Re-entry Program. Uh, our mission here is really our patients. We want to relieve the suffering the patients are going through because they can't find a doctor because they're long waiting lists. Our top priority is our patients. As a professional, that's what we're expected to do. And in order to do that, in order to do it, we, we want to license international medical doctors, especially with what's called a transitional license that Laurel Broton talked about in her report. Um, it's not the only solution to the problem, but we think it goes a long way. There are other, the other solutions that we ad advocate 
uh, which I can go into later on. Um, we have a large number of opponents uh, to this, uh, including the College of Physicians and Surgeons, which I think, as you know, as a media person, that they have uh, established a reputation over the years as not always being fair and straightforward. Uh, a few years ago, they lost the Medical Review Committee, their largest committee, as a result of conducting unfair audits of physicians, uh, which resulted in at least one physician's suicide. Uh, the media has, has done a, a large number of expose of the college over the years. Um, I'm grateful to Dalton, George Smitherman, Laurel Broughton, and all the others for passing a variety of bills, uh, especially the recent one, Bill 97, which requires the college to, um, to issue transitional licenses uh, to IMDs. Um, we have uh, sort of uh, uh, run our gamut. I've been doing this issue for over three years, and others have been doing it far much longer than that. We are at the position that if we do not, res we do not resolve uh, this issue uh, soon, and I'm looking at my watch very soon, we, we are in the, in the process of thinking of uh, pursuing legal action. And this may uh, be a human rights type of complaint, or in addition might be uh, uh, lawsuits uh, relating to negligence and asking for compensation. We have a lawyer here who will talk to you more about that. Uh, I'm going to stop there and introduce our, our next speakers, I'm trying to keep this brief because I know you, you have a, a lot to do in, at Queen's Park here today. Um, our next speaker um, is uh, Dr. Mitra Arjang. Um, she's uh, uh, on my left, and uh, she is uh, graduated, uh, got her medical degree from uh, Shahad Beheshti University of Medical Sciences and Health Services in Tehran, Iran in 1994. Uh, so she is a qualified uh, general surgeon in Iran. Uh, she has been uh, applying to get a residency here unsuccessfully and uh, she will tell you her uh, story. Uh, Dr. Arjang. Thank you, Dr. Green. Uh, I don't want to talk about this specifically about my own situation. I want to talk about the all international medical doctors in Canada and all the struggles they have. Usually we see paramedics vehicle passing, rushing the streets to the hospital to take patients to the hospital. Uh, we all know that as much as transferring patients to the hospital is important, doing the, uh, in a matter of time, doing the diagnosis and treatment in emergency situation and even non-emergency situation is important and critical as well. In non-emergency situations, sometimes delayed treatment can uh, affect the standard of care we provide to our patients. Sometimes it may cause more injuries to the patients or give the disease some time to spread in the body and take the chance of cure from the patient. So it's very important to consider it that even in non-emergency and elective situation, Providing professional health care, uh, health care professionals to the patients and offering the treatment they needed in a proper time without a long waiting list is very critical for the health care system. It's uh, not difficult to find so many people who got disabled or their family member died because of the long waiting times to get the treatment they needed. And we see many people who decide to travel to other countries to receive the treatment they need because they cannot afford waiting so long in here in Canada. And all these long-term care maintenance and disability services and the expenses for the traveling for medical care is a huge burden on the health care of Canada. If Okay, we have this doctor shortage here and we are looking for a solution. If you check the Immigration Canada website, you see in the skilled worker application form, the physicians and specialists are in the top of the list, the most demanding job for immigration. And now here we are, international medical doctor who migrated to Canada. We have more than 7,500 numbers of doctors 
just in Ontario, just the people who registered in Health Force Ontario, and we, we are much, much more than that in all over Ontario and all over Canada. Uh, we come here, we survive with any casual job, pay our taxes, and raise our children, and meanwhile pay thousands of dollars to pay for the exams, to pass all the Canadian medical exams and requalify our credential to be able to do practice medicine here. But even after passing all the exams, we cannot do that because of the regulations of College of Physicians and Surgeons, they demand us to do a residency period. And each year, less than 5%, less than 5% of this number can able to get a residency position all over in Canada, not just in Ontario. And what happens to the rest of us? We can't do anything. We are here, mm -hmm. we came here, we are ready to go wherever is needed to practice medicine, to serve these people in medical care, but we cannot do that. Canadians, I believe that Canadians really believe the higher standard of care, higher than what it is really right now. And we as international medical doctor deserve to have a fair opportunity, a fair program to be assessed and be qualified to be able to practice in Canada. We don't need a residency program. We all are studied medicine. We all have clinical setting uh, training, patient encounter training, and most of us have some years of experience of independent practice in our back home. All we need is a, a assessment program to evaluate our knowledge and skills and ex experience and adjust us to Canadian medical system. That's all we need. And we need a fair chance to be able to do assist. Don't let this treasure of knowledge and experience get wasted in dead-ended lines of application forms and endless waiting times for the residency. Use us, let take your standard of care in a higher level. And I want you to think about what I said. I want to ask you to check our petition. And if you are agree with me, sign our petition. The website is www.petitiononline.com slash hope2010 slash petition html. Or you can sign it here. Or, or you can sign in here. Or anyone who see that, I don't know if it's, you know, it's not able to be seen, but just check, check the petitiononline.com slash hope2010 and please sign the petition. And here is a paper if anyone is willing to sign right now. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, thank you, Dr. R. R. Jang. And uh, yes, uh, we, we do a, a lot of our work online, including the petition. We do have a, a website which is at the bottom of the Press Kit Association for Access to Healthcare Services. Anybody can join for free. Our next speaker, uh, very privileged to introduce a, a man who is a human rights lawyer, uh, amongst other things. Uh, his firm's credo is accessible justice, uh, which uh, coincides with our uh, concern about accessible health care. Um, he is an adjunct professor of the University of Toronto Faculty of Law, uh, where he teaches a course on access to justice. Um, he articled with the late